NFL Week 11 is over. Week 12 is here. What's going on, BLV football fans? It's Mitch here, back with another week of my NFL Power Rankings, the video where I rank each and every NFL team from number 32 to number one, from the worst to the best. Who is the number one team in the NFL? That is what I determine in this video. And uniquely speaking, week 11 was eye-opening for me. I must say that week 11 put a lot into perspective. I don't know if this is for everyone or just me, but it feels like week 11, I saw a lot of teams play the way I feel they're going to play for the rest of the year. Whether they're like in the 20s or they're contending for a playoff spot or they're a contender for the Super Bowl, it feels like a lot of the teams gave me great information about what they truly are this year. And I feel like now, as we enter late November, Thanksgiving football, we're going to get into the colder months it feels like the NFL is opening up to this is our identity. And now I really feel I have a great, great handle on the truest contenders, the truest pretenders, and even the teams that I know are going to progress and get better and challenge teams down the stretch, even if they're not going to make the playoffs. Then I also have a feel for the teams that are selling and the teams that are losing and the teams that are losing a grip on this season so here are my power rankings if that sounds good don't forget to grunk spike the like button and subscribe for weekly nfl power rankings and nfl content just like this get in the comment section and let me know your thoughts on my power rankings let's roll at number 32 the carolina panthers it did not take the carolina panthers very long to get back to the worst team in the NFL here on the BLV. Why are they the worst team? Well, they've quit on their coach. Frank Reich, I don't think is going to be the coach very long or much longer. He's a goner. He doesn't know if he's calling plays. He doesn't know if he wants another person to call plays. The players look uninspired. Bryce Young's getting shellacked in the pocket. He's making terrible decisions in the pocket under pressure. This team is really bad, and the worst part about it, man, is for Carolina Panthers fans, they don't have their first pick. They sold out to get Bryce Young, and in a year where it feels like we're going to have some really special quarterbacks enter the NFL in 2024, they will not have an opportunity to pick one, and they will not have a true opportunity to start fresh. They're going to have to rebuild with Bryce Young in mind at the center and I'm not saying that Bryce Young, I'm giving up on him, but Panthers fans have to be distraught that they passed on C.J. Stroud. Like, such, such, such a killer to the psyche of Panthers fans. How can they keep pounding, knowing that C.J. Stroud is what he is in Houston and Bryce Young looks the way he looks in Carolina and that they don't have their head coach, they don't have their direction, the arrow is not pointing up. It's pointing down. If anything, this team is a goner. They are the worst team in the NFL, period. The second worst team in the NFL, I feel, is the New York Giants. They are no longer the worst team in the NFL after I ranked them at number 32 last week, after Danny DeVito showed us he can win an NFL game. Congratulations! To the man, the myth, the legend, the Italian stallion himself, Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito's got the best celebration in football. You love to see it. Italian stallion. I want to see more of it. He's going to have another winnable game on his plate against the New England Patriots this week. Thought Saquon played phenomenal in that game against Washington. Don Martindale's defense showed up and showed out with six turnovers. And although he took nine sacks, DeVito played the game of his life and was balling out there. A number of nice throws. So good for the Giants. It's a fun win over a division rival. They're going to have a top five pick or so regardless of that win. So 
The Giants are hitting the reset button. I think they're trying to aim for a new quarterback in the draft. And if not, they're probably going to add a very good piece to this team for Brian Dayball to work with in 2024. But nonetheless, the G-Men don't have a lot of talent. It's just fun to watch. DeVito in action. At number 30, the team that the Giants play this week, the New England Patriots. Now, as I sit here at 6.13 Pacific time, on Tuesday, November November 21st, I have no idea who the New England Patriots are going to be starting at quarterback in Week 12. We have not heard a single word from Bill Belichick. Is it Mac Jones? Is it Will Greer? Is it Malik Cunningham? Is it Bailey Zappi? We really don't know. All I know is there is a lot coming out about Trent Brown and his attendance J.C. Jackson and his attendance. There feels to be a bad vibe in that stadium, in that locker room. Bill Belichick, there's been rumors all bye week about him going to the Chargers or the Commanders or some other place. Tom Brady's answering questions about Bill Belichick's future. It's just all bad in New England. This team is not good. They are horrific. And the offense is just unwatchable. The defense can hang in games against most teams, but the offense is just pathetic and it's not changing no matter who they put in there at quarterback. It's a combination of bad quarterback play, offensive line that can't block a soul, and wide receivers that can't separate from your grandma. The Patriots are at number 30. At number 29, the Tennessee Titans. The Tennessee Titans have entered the category for me officially after their loss to Jacksonville of they just suck. Like, I was trying to hold off on the Titans just suck hype for a while because they have Mike Vrabel and he usually overcomes and he coaches up a team. But man, this team just is not good. Like, the offensive line is horrible. The state of the offense is in a terrible position. The only ways they score points or move the football is on trick plays. When they can't run the ball, they can't do anything. Will Levis has regressed since his first couple performances in the NFL. The defense is in shambles right now. Like, the run defense isn't what it was early in the year. The pass defense is getting lit up consistently, even by the Jags, who have not been looking good on offense. The Titans just don't have a lot of talent. They don't have a lot of talent. They're not a very good team. They need to start fresh. They might need to go in a different direction when it comes to general manager, when it comes to head coach, when it comes to quarterback. Like, although I love Vrabel, I think that's the best thing they have going for them. It might not be a bad idea to just start over because this team is at ground zero. Like, they stink. So, at number 29, the Titans. At number 28, the Chicago Bears. The Chicago Bears had an impressive performance against the Detroit Lions on the road at Detroit. I didn't really believe they could have won that game. Like, I didn't think before that game started, oh yeah, the Bears are going to walk in here and they're going to look like the better team for three out of four quarters. But that was actually the case on Sunday. They dominated Detroit on offense. They possessed the football for 40 minutes. The defense took away the football, three turnovers on Jared Goff. They got a stinky Jared Goff performance. But in epic, epic Bears fashion, they find a way to lose the game, which does help their draft status. So I'm sure Bears fans are happy about that. But they're not able to pull off a nice upset, which would have done a lot for Justin Fields. It really would have done a lot if he was able to come away with that win. But I continue to say it, man. Justin Fields just doesn't win games. He doesn't win games. He's not a winner. Like his formula, his style of quarterback, he's smoke and mirrors. He's a good athlete. He can run. He can move. He makes some plays as he did against the Lions on the move, throwing the football. But when it comes to in the fourth quarter, making those throws, making those plays under pressure, he's just not it. The defense, I feel, is getting better and better and better. Montez Sweat has certainly helped the pass rush and even the run defense, which is an area they've been very strong. The secondary, I think, has been a a story for them. Tariq Stevenson, 
the rookie corner had a huge game against Detroit. I think he had a forced fumble and an interception, if I recall correctly. DJ Moore... DJ Moore was a great move and a great ad. I think you can build upon him in the future. I'm not sure if, you know, they should really buy the performance of Justin Fields. I think they should not buy that. I think they should go about their business, draft a quarterback, draft the other best player they can get in the draft, and restart at that position, and restart with the core of their team, the head coach, all that stuff. So, that's kind of where I stand with the Chicago Bears. I think they had a nice performance against Detroit, but I don't think that they should really be buying into, okay, Fields, because of how he played against the Lions, that's still their guy. Like, don't buy into that. That That is number one lesson for the Chicago Bears. Next up, we got the New York Jets. The Jets are at number 27. The Jets... They stink right now. Like, they're really bad. And I, I talked at length on the review about their offense, so I don't really want to rip into them. The offense sucks. Like, right now, it might be the worst offense in the NFL. It might, might, might be nice. Like, might be the worst offense. They are terrible. Like, this is one of the worst third-down offenses in history. They can't run the ball. Their play calling is really, really pathetic and unoriginal and lacking creativity. Quarterback position went from really bad to even worse, going from Zach Wilson to Boyle. I think Boyle is that bad. The wide receiving core outside of Garrett Wilson is uninspiring. Like, this offense stinks, and you can't win football games with an offense this bad in 2023. At the same time, I also feel like this defense gets a little bit too much hype. Like, they would look a lot better if the offense was formidable, but... They also just give up too many plays. Like, they get ran on too often. They give up too many chunk plays. They give up like an 80-yard touchdown against the Bills. It feels like this defense gets all the credit in the world for the turnovers and the, the games against the good quarterbacks, which they deserve a lot of credit. But at the same time, there's games where they just, like, don't play their best. So... They're a good defense. I feel like they might be a little overrated. This team is just really bad. Ro Robert Sala, I don't think he's a coach. I don't think he's a head coach in this league. I really don't. Like, I feel like Robert Sala is really being masked by the quarterback position. And because he doesn't have a good quarterback, people are not pointing the blame at the head coach. And I think that's a mistake. Because... He has seen this offense, and he has not been able to do anything about it. I understand he's a defensive coach, but man, head coach in 2023, you got to be able to handle an offensive side of the football. I don't think he's the answer either. As much as the players might like him on defense, I just don't think he is the answer for the Jets either. So quarterback and head coach seriously need to be under scrutiny. I feel like a lot of people talking about quarterback. Not enough people talking about coach with the Jets. Next up, at number 26, the Washington Commanders. They're just inconsistent. They're very frustrating. And I feel like the Commanders have talent, especially on offense where Eric Bieniemy has been going to work each and every week. I mean, it speaks for itself. Sam Howell, what he was able to do. In his two games against Philadelphia, you compare that to what we saw from Patrick Mahomes. I mean, Washington has had an inspiring offensive season. Terry McLaurin, Deami Brown, Logan Thomas, who I think kind of stinks. J Jahan Dotson, maybe a little uninspiring, maybe a little bit lackluster compared to expectation. But other guys stepping up like Curtis Samuel, Brian Robinson. All these guys are getting in the action. They're all making plays. Even Byron Pringle makes some plays. Like, they've taken a lot of sacks, but they make a lot of plays. They're an exciting offense to watch. And the defensive side of the football with Washington has been a problem. Like, Jack Del Rio needs to be fired. Ron Rivera needs to be fired. Ron Rivera has done nothing in the NFL for quite some time. He does not bring anything to the table that deserves keeping his job and certainly, Jack Del Rio has been underwhelming with the talent that exists on his defense. I understand they let go of Chase Young and Montez Sweat and all that, but this guy is not it either. They need a fresh start with the coaching conversation, 
I would just elevate Eric Bieniemy to head coach, let him bring in his own staff. That would be my call, but it depends on what they want to do. At number 25, the Arizona Cardinals. The Zona Cardinals with Kyler Murray are better than the worst teams in the NFL. And we saw them once again play a competitive game against the Texans, who I rank pretty high on my list. The Arizona Cardinals, with Kyler Murray, a playmaking quarterback, can score some points, can make some plays on third down, have a respectable running game. They have a guy that can make plays outside of structure and be dangerous even when the defense is right. They have a defense that always plays inspired, always plays hard and physical, and they are capable of turning the ball over and being chaotic, which is something I can say positively. They don't have a lot of talent, but this is a team that stays in games with Kyler Murray. So I have them at number 25. At number 24, the Green Bay Packers, a team that I've been impressed with as of late. I feel like the Packers have been improving they did nearly beat the Steelers, and I think you would argue they, they were really the better team on that field that day, and they were just a little unlucky. And then they follow that up by beating the Chargers at home. And that was a good matchup for them, I'm not going to lie. Like, on paper, the Chargers, they're a pass-first team. The Packers, you can run on them, but it's hard to pass on them, right? The Packers, they love to run the ball and utilize play action. Well, we know the Chargers have always been weak against the run, and then they're susceptible to the pass off of it. And Jordan Love had the best game of maybe his entire career, or, or at least one of them. But he had his first 300-yard passing game of this season. And it was against Brandon Staley. Who would have thought? But the Packers have been improving. And I like what I've seen from the offense a little bit more. It sucks to see what Aaron Jones what happened to him, that he's going to be out for the year. A.J. Dillon should be able to take over. He's been playing good football. If the defense continues to you know, improve, hopefully, like I still think they need to change their defensive coordinator going into next year. There's no real point to do that now. But this is not a good team. I just feel like they're trending in the right direction. They're getting better. They're improving, which makes them a team that I don't really want to bet against. But I kind of feel like as an underdog, they're a little feisty. So watch out for the Packers for the rest of the year at number 24. At number 23, the Cincinnati Bengals, which has to be the toughest ranking of this entire video. They were a top five team for me with Joe Burrow. And then all of a sudden, Joe Burrow goes down and it really deflates the AFC, in my opinion. It makes it a lot less competitive and interesting in terms of the AFC playoffs. Because you always want a guy like Joe Burrow, who's clutch, who plays big in big moments in the playoffs. This defense is always fun to watch in a game plan, game-to-game -game setting in the playoffs. We're not going to see that. They're not going to make the playoffs. They're going to finish last in their division. I'd be shocked if they finished any better than last in their division with what they have at quarterback right now. That being said, this team is not going to go down without a fight. They've got good players on offense. Jamar Chase, T. Higgins should be coming back. Tyler Boyd, the offensive line, Joe Mixon. They'll still surprise some people. They're capable of upsets, especially within their division. Then defensively, we know they're going to play hard and try to pick up the slack. But without Joe Burrow, this is not a legit team. This is not a legit contender. This is not a playoff team. This is a team that will be having a much higher pick than they should have, but that might be beneficial for their future. It's depressing. It is what it is. I'll see how good they look against the Steelers this week to see if I can move them up, or if they really look bad, I'll potentially move them down. Not really sure what Joe Burrow truly means to this team quite yet. At number 22, the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams had a pretty good game against the Seahawks. I felt like if Geno doesn't get hurt, they probably lose. But even just being right there with the Seahawks tells me about the Rams for the rest of the year, that they're going to be a competent football team. The defense, I felt like, again, it is what it is. Like, they play hard. They're schemed well. They're coached well. Fundamentally sound. They don't make a ton of plays, but they kind of let opponents and offenses screw up, and they take advantage of it. And then they're also good at stifling teams in the red zone. They're good at keeping teams out of the end zone. 
And they're good sometimes on third down. They can play some creative coverages, creative pressures, things like that. But if you can keep them out of those situations, you can really score points on them. On the offensive side of the ball, Stafford's taking way too many hits, way too many big hits. I fear for his life out there. The offensive line needs to be a bit better. The run game should improve with Williams coming back this week, which is a big add. Cooper Cup injured once again. Nakua has been really good all year. They added a new weapon out there at wide receiver, some little white guy, I guess, to help replace Cooper Cup because you got to have that guy in this offense for Sean McVay. But we'll see how they continue to play. With Matthew Stafford out there, they're competent. They're competitive. They're not good. They're competitive. At number 21, the Atlanta Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons are entirely confusing. They're coming off their bye week. Desmond Ritter's the quarterback. Their defense had been trending down. We'll see if they can fix some things after the bye week. That will be intriguing for me. The offense, I don't know, man. Like, B. John Robinson should be featured for the rest of the year, I hope. I just hope that they can be competitive for their division. I, I don't really know what to say with this team. I don't really know what to think about this team. This is like one of the teams I still don't really know what they are. They feel average, but at the same time... They feel frustrating, like they're underwhelming, they're underachieving from what I've seen in moments this year. Like, it's kind of a weird vibe with the Atlanta Falcons. I don't know what to say. I feel like Arthur Smith is coaching for his job at this point at number 21. At number 20, the Las Vegas Raiders. I learned a lot about the Raiders in that game against the Dolphins. I learned that against even a legit opponent, that I think the Dolphins are a legit opponent, especially in Miami, the Raiders are going to play with heart. They're going to play with passion. They're going to grind. They're going to play tough, physical football. They're really well coached on defense. They don't allow a lot of big plays or they don't really have a lot of mistakes. They're not penalized a lot on either side of the ball. But the offense, especially the quarterback, is just underwhelming. Like, I feel like if you put Josh Allen on the Raiders, this is an AFC contender. Like, they have a better defense than the Bills right now. They probably have better weapons than the Bills right now. The offensive lines are about the same. The run games are about the same. You switch quarterbacks with this team, they're actually a pretty competent team. And Antonio Pierce doesn't really scream, you know, upper echelon head coach. But what I like about him is the players respect him. The players play for him. The players play hard for him. And he's learning on the job. The defensive coordinator is the best coach on this team. The offensive play calling could leave a little bit to be desired. Like, I, I want to see a little bit more creativity coming in the game plans moving forward. But overall, the Raiders, I feel like, are going to be feisty for the rest of the year. At number 19, the Indianapolis Colts. I feel like the Colts and the Raiders are pretty similar. They're feisty football teams. They're not overly talented, but they've got talented players sprinkled throughout their roster. And... Their quarterbacks are a bit underwhelming, but the coach on the Colts is better. Like, I feel like Shane Steichen, obviously, he's not an, an intern head coach, right? Uh, so, he's not a guy that is in there just taking over for a guy that got fired. He's the real guy for the rest of the year. He's the real guy for their future. And Shane Steichen has proven that for the Colts. That is the one thing that... I was indecisive about before the season. Is Shane Steichen really that guy? I think I spoke pretty positively about him, but I just didn't really know, right? It was hard to know. Like, how much is Jalen Hurts? How much is the Eagles offensive line? How much can you really replicate with another franchise or another team? And so far, he's proven that a lot of his creativity has been lost from the Eagles and has transferred to the Colts. And you can see that watching both of the teams. The run game for the Colts is entirely original, creative, it's versatile, it's dynamic. No matter the running back, they are competent in the passing game. You know, Michael Pittman's having a good year. I like what I've seen from Josh Downs as well. And the O-line has improved drastically under his teaching. The defense is okay. It's not great. It's not bad. It's okay. And... Still, they, they have some promising players there. And Darius Leonard, that's a shocker, man. I wouldn't have called that before the season. Kind of depressing, man, because he was such a great football player. 
and to see him cut by that Colts team where at times I felt like he was the best linebacker in the NFL for that team. And he's just suffered too many, too many injuries. So we'll see who picks him up. But at number 19, the Colts, they're still kind of in the running for the wild card in this AFC. I wouldn't rule them out necessarily, but they also don't have a very high ceiling. They just feel average. At number 18, the New Orleans Saints. The Saints are kind of average, but at the same time, frustratingly average. Like it feels like they should be better than they are. Like the offense should be better than it is. It should be more consistent less infuriating, right? I don't really know the health status of Derek Carr, whether he's going to be okay or not. The offensive line has been shaky up and down all year. The sync between the receivers and Carr has been, you know, iffy at best. Like Chris Olave and Derek Carr have not been seeing eye to eye all year. I want to see them continue to work Taysom Hill on short yardage and red zone. Like that guy's a weapon, continue to use him. Jawan Johnson, I'd like to see more of in this offense. Like, feels like he's been kind of cast out of this offense. Alvin Kamara, they've kind of gotten away from heavily utilizing him in the offense, which might be a good thing. I don't know. Like, I don't think he's the same player he used to be, but I still think he's a good player. And I'd like to see more Shahid as well. But I don't know, man. It feels like, again, like Derek Carr, the vibes are off with him in the offense. The defense feel like is solid, but at times they've also been exposed. Like their pass rush isn't great. Their run defense isn't what it was, but it's still fine. They still got really talented players in the secondary and at linebacker, but it feels like they're just not what they used to be. They're good. They're not elite. And this team is just frustrating because it feels like if the offense was a little bit better, a little bit better play calling, a little bit better scheme, a little bit better offensive line play, a little bit better run game, a little bit better quarterback play, you know, they'd be a lot better. They'd be definite team to win their division. If the defense was just a little bit faster, a little bit more of a pass rush, like they could be a legit team, but they're, they're just not. It's, it's weird. At number 17, the Los Angeles Chargers. I don't need to talk about this team. Justin Herbert's fantastic. I hope he gets a new coach. Played great against the Packers. I have no excuses for that team, honestly, and that loss. I mean, you really look at the offense, guys, and you look at the Chargers, right? Who do they really have? You know, people talk about who does Mahomes have right now? Who does Herbert have? Like Keenan Allen? That's it. Travis Kelsey for the Chiefs, right? You look at that situation for the Chargers. The offensive line isn't great. It's fine. It's okay. It's not bad. But it's, it's, it's okay. The running back situation, Austin Eckler is not what he used to be. He's slower. People are running him down in open space. He's fumbling the ball. He's dropping the ball. Like, he's becoming washed in front of our eyes. And some of these receivers are actively bad and hurting the team. Like, Jalen Guyton does nothing for them. Quinton Johnston is trash. Like, This offense is not good. Gerald Everett's been injured. Like, they don't have anything. And then the defense is just not good. (laughs) Like, period. Like, Brandon Staley is a terrible football coach. If I was the Chargers, I'd look for a head coach. I'd try to keep Kellen Moore, but I also wouldn't really be attached to Kellen Moore at the same time. I'd be trying to get Belichick, probably. You know, as much as I've been hating on him this year, If he has a good quarterback, I feel like he could at least turn around the defense. Maybe he brings in McDaniels offensively. That would be fine. Like, I don't really, whatever. But I feel like if they brought in Belichick, this team would at least be buttoned up on defense. Herbert wouldn't have to worry about that. And then Herbert could carry him on offense, and they'd figure that out. So for me, like, they should be looking for that type of coach at number 17. Or maybe even if Vrabel gets fired, like somebody like Vrabel or... Maybe even, like, maybe the way to go for the Chargers is, like, a proper, really good defensive mind that actually knows what he's doing. And a proven guy. Like, maybe McDonald from the Ravens, who's been really brilliant with the Ravens and kind of revolutionary and wasn't carried by Aaron Donald, right? So, at number 17, the Los Angeles Chargers. At number 16, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Bucs are smack dab in the middle of my rankings. 
Baker Mayfield, I feel, has been playing pretty well overall. You know, I think he threw his first red zone interception this week against the Niners in a long, long time. But the Bucks, they feel like, when I watch them, the best team in their division. I think their offense is consistently pretty average. They can throw the ball, explosive passes to Mike Evans. I like what I've seen out of Palmer and Otten and White in the receiving game. Godwin does his thing. The offensive line, I feel, is a pretty good pass-protecting unit. Their run game is pretty inconsistent, but that is just what the Bucs do. That's what they are. And the defense is pretty solid, right? They had a really bad game against the Texans. I felt like they did get shredded against the Niners pretty predictably, but overall against average offenses, they kind of do their thing. So it's a defense that maybe is not great, but they're not terrible either. They're not, I don't know if I'd categorize them as like bad average. Like they're a little bit, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. They're just above average in my opinion, defensively. And they're about average offensively. And that keeps them about average. But when you watch them, they feel like they have an identity. They're maybe a little underwhelming from a coaching standpoint. But to me, this team has played like the best team most consistently in their division. That's why I have them as the top rated team in the NFC South at number 16. At number 15, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh Steelers are at number 15. Matt Canada fired. That's nice. That's good. They should do that. That being said, Kenny Pickett is also not it. So expecting the Steelers to drastically get better on offense would be a miscalculation because Kenny Pickett doesn't really, to me, scream franchise quarterback right now. Misses too many throws. Does a little bit in terms of running and scrambling but he's not dynamic he doesn't have a big arm he's not overly accurate he's not great in terms of decision making like he has a good situation around him offensively other than the play calling the run game has improved throughout the year the pass protection is pretty solid I never say in a Steelers game wow they're getting overwhelmed by the pass rush of the other team I've never said that once this year the receivers are talented Like, this is a better situation than a lot of young quarterbacks have, and he's underwhelming. So, for me, Matt Canada was a huge issue, but Kenny Pickett is issue number two. The defense is good, very good even. They're just not as good as the Browns. So, they're not able to completely carry this team to a really awesome playoff seed position. They still have a chance for the playoffs. They have a weak schedule. But their defense isn't dominant enough to predict them to go to the playoffs. And their offense is still too underwhelming to really decide whether or not they can beat even teams that are probably worse than them on paper. Feels like this team can lose to anybody. But with Tomlin at coach and the way they play and the playmaking of their defense, they can beat anybody if it's their day. Because they can even be outgained and still win a lot of games. They're a funky, fluky team, but that's what they are at number 15. At number 14, the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings had a disappointing finish to that Sunday night football game against the Broncos. In my eyes, they were the better team, right? They were better on third down. They were better in the red zone. They gained more yards. They had more first downs. They had more possession. Like every stat you go through, they won. The only category they lost, turnovers. Three turnovers. And that was the decisive edge the Broncos needed, especially at home, to take that game. And it happens, right? But I think looking at the Vikings, I just love how they're coached on offense and defense. It's a, a very well-coached team. They they really feel a lot like the Giants from last year, where they're not very talented. But they're carried by coaching. And it's somewhat predictable and consistent within this season. They're going to be in close games at home. They're viable to upset pretty much anyone in the NFL. Josh Dobbs gives them something with his legs. Justin Jefferson will come back and provide that number one option that they need for the offense. The run game looked good against the Vikings or the Broncos last week. So the Vikings run game is getting better. The defense, they're 
aggressive. They force mistakes. They get sacks. They get stops in the red zone. That's what you want to see from a modern defense, especially with lacking talent. And Addison can make plays. Hawkinson can make plays. They've got playmakers. I like the vibe still. I'm not shading and fading away from the Vikings going to the playoffs. I still think they're a playoff team. I just don't think they're going to win a playoff game. At number 13, the Seattle Seahawks. I think the Seahawks and the Vikings are pretty interchangeable here. The Vikings have been playing better as of late. I think the Seahawks are more talented. The Seahawks, though, leave something on the field every single time, whether it's their red zone offense or their execution on third down or Geno Smith's lacking inability to just take the check down more often or sometimes their defense gives up too many big plays or sometimes, you know, it's just like one area of their football team is always lacking week after week after week. It feels like they can't get 60 minutes of good defense and good offense. They can't execute in the red zone. They can't convert into touchdowns. They can't consistently move the football and score. They can move the football and then they stall out a lot. And Geno has been uncharacteristically this year compared to last year inconsistent except in the fourth quarter where he's able to drive down and put them in a position to win which he did once again against the Rams they were just a little unfortunate they made a couple mistakes some of the details on offense some of the details in situational management is a little off compared to Pete Carroll's teams of the past and the defense is good young inspiring but not exactly great so they're a team that it just, it feels like they're middling. It feels like they're not quite good enough, but they're not bad. They're not even, they feel a, they feel more talented than they're playing, but it also feels like they're not quite good enough to be confident in. So that's why I have them at number 13. At number 12, the Denver Broncos, who feel a little bit opposite from the Seahawks. The Seahawks feel like a more talented team than Denver, but Denver knows who they are, right? Seattle, it feels like they don't necessarily know who they are. They want to pass one game. They want to run the next. You know, they're a blitzing team one game. They're a four-man rush team the next. What are they exactly? Denver, it feels like we know what we are. We're going to run the ball. We're going to run the ball. We're going to be heavy formation. Russell Wilson's going to scramble every once in a while. We're going to run a lot of play action. We're going to throw jump balls to Cortland Sutton. And Russ is going to protect the ball. Sean Payton is going to take field goals on fourth down early in the game, and we're going to try to win this game in the fourth quarter. Our defense is going to be opportunistic. We're going to show some creative different fronts. We're going to get pressure on third down, and we got a couple ballers in the secondary that always make plays. And the Broncos are clearly identifiable in terms of what they are. They're not thoroughly talented across their roster. I think their receiving core is eh, it's fine. Tight end position is eh. The offensive line is pretty good. Running backs are pretty good. Russ has been average, I would say. The defense, I think, overall is playing well. I don't think their personnel screams all pro amazing top five defense. I still think they struggle against the run. I still think they struggle to tackle. But their pass defense has been a lot better. So for me, the Broncos, like clearly I understand what they are. I feel like they're going to probably come back down to earth because they've been a little fortunate against really good teams but they're a lot better than what they were so I'll say that at number 12 at number 11 the Buffalo Bills the Buffalo Bills you could argue could go back into the top 10 I still have them at 11 I want to see how they play against the Eagles it's one thing to play well against the Jets who don't have an offense and although I expected the Jets to keep that game close because of what we've seen from the Jets and the Bills over the last couple of years, it was easy to see what happened in that game, right? The Bills, their offense did what they did, but they weren't panicked into a situation where Josh Allen had to play hero ball again and they started turning the ball over and the offensive line started getting exposed and Josh Allen went into maniac mode. Like he just took what was there and I credit him for that. They ran the ball exceptionally well, which... Hey, the Jets, once again, not stopping the run. Who would have thought? And then the defense, 
you know, they just understood the assignment. They were playing Zach Wilson. Like, let's stop the run on first down. Let's pressure him on third down. And then we see what Rasul Douglas was able to do for this defense. And that was big time. So I think they're improving on defense for sure. I think they're showing signs of life. I think their offense, as long as they don't turn it over, they're fantastic. They've got arguably the best quarterback in football right now. It's just, at the same time, they don't feel overly talented on either side of the ball. It feels like they're too Josh or Josh Allen oriented. And it feels like Sean McDermott is liable at any time to make a mistake in game management. He is definitely going to have games where he doesn't come up with a good defensive game plan against good opponents. So I really want to see how this defense plays against the Eagles. If they get ran over and physically dismantled, I'm going to once again say they are what they are. They're Josh Allen. They're a good offense. They're lacking a defense. And there's too much on Josh Allen. And it still feels that way. But he's so good that it makes them look good. So just let's wait a little longer. I have them at number 11. Entering the top 10. At number 10, I have the Cleveland Browns. If you wanted to put Cleveland at 11, 12, or 9, I wouldn't be mad at you. But Cleveland has the best defense in the NFL. It's non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. They are very good. They are excellent. They are a studly unit filled with a strong run defense, a fast defense, a good cover unit that can play man, that can play zone, and they can get after the quarterback and cause mistakes and win games on their own. They're such a dominant unit. It makes them a top 10 team. The offense has an identity. They're not going to put their quarterback out there to drop back 50 times and throw the ball. What they're going to do is utilize a lot of play action. They're going to run the football a lot. And they're going to scream the football a lot. And that's been enough to beat teams like the Steelers. They have an interesting game against Denver in Denver. I want to see how they play down the stretch against some of these better teams. But the Browns have such a good defense, it should carry them to the playoffs and make them a viable team to upset a team in the playoffs. It just sucks that their quarterback play is so underwhelming because this team and this roster is really talented. And I think low-key, the coaching staff has been phenomenal this year. Stefanski on offense, I don't think is getting enough credit. And obviously, Schwartz on defense. At number nine, the Jacksonville Jags. The Jags had an impressive bounce-back win against the Titans. That being said, it's the Titans. Like, I talked about, they suck. They're not good. They're stinky. Rookie quarterback, right? Bad offensive line. The defense took advantage of it, and the offense was able to do what I said they needed to do, air the ball out down the field against Tennessee, and they did that. So that's impressive. They showed signs of life. I don't necessarily think this is a great football team. I would not put them and categorize them as a Super Bowl contender or an AFC contender, but I do think that they're a likely playoff team. I think they're good enough for that. They've got enough of an offense, enough of a defense, but it feels like they're just enough of underwhelming on both sides of the ball. Trevor Lawrence is just enough underwhelming. The offensive line just isn't quite good enough. The defense isn't. The pass rush isn't quite good enough. Like there's areas of this team where they're good, they're strong, they're solid, they're formidable, they're not special. So at number nine, the Jags. At number eight, the Houston Texans. The Texans are not as solid across the board as Jacksonville, but they're really good on offense. Super explosive, can run the football. Stroud is just throwing dot after dot after dart and the offensive line's improving with each and every game turnovers are going to happen they still were able to win a game where Stroud had three picks that shows you that they're getting better as a team even though they were the more talented team in that game I believe they were the home team in that game against the Cardinals they still made enough plays to win and Actually, interceptions at times for Stroud will not be a bad thing because that means he's trying to air the ball out and make plays and, you know, actually go for it. Sometimes interceptions aren't terrible, right? 
But as long as he keeps slinging it and playing the way he can play, they're they're a team. They're a good team. And the defense is improving. The pass rush each and every week is impressing me. And the secondary with Stingley at corner now feels like they can play pretty well against most offenses in the league. They've got a really tough test versus the Jags. I'm intrigued to see how that goes. But this team is a top 10 team for me. At number seven, the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions move, I guess they moved down. I'm not quite sure. On my power rankings, I think they moved down a spot. I just don't believe in this defense. I just have no belief in the defense. I think the offense, it was fluky, right? Jared Goff had a bad game, three interceptions. It is what it is. It happens. We knew it was going to happen at least once this year. You just don't know when it's going to happen. The offensive line is super strong. The run game is awesome. The play caller is great. They're they're very aggressive on fourth down, and most of the time they execute. It feels like situationally they're they're excellent. They're very strong. They understand two-minute situations, end-of-the-game situations, red zone situations, fourth down situations on offense and defense. And their defense does have a little bit of a playmaking quality with their pass rush led by Aiden Hutchinson with their secondary led by the rookie Brian Branch. But they're also just, I mean, 40 minutes of possession. The Bears, are you kidding me? Like, they're just not quite good enough. Mobile quarterbacks give them issues. Their secondary is not very good. Passing games give them problems. I think they're good against the run, traditional runs. But I don't feel like anything else about their defense is inspiring. So, to be a truly great top six, top five team in the NFL, you need to be better on defense. And I just don't think the lines are there. So, that's why I have them at number seven. At number six, the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins have been lacking the firepower and the explosiveness that we saw from them early in the year, but their defense has been playing great football, and they played well again against the Raiders. Like, situationally, they get a good pass rush. They can blitz a little bit just enough. They can rush with four just enough. Their corners are playing phenomenal, especially Jalen Ramsey. Javon Holland's been one of the best safeties in football. Xavier Howard had a strong game against the Raiders. And the defense overall is just clicking now with Vic Fangio. And if they're able to hold teams around 20 points, there's no reason why a Tyreek Hill-led offense with Mike McDaniel calling plays should not give them a chance to win against anybody. So Miami's defense has me believing that they're actually getting more playoff ready. Now, I want to see more from Tua. Tua's got to do more. He can't turn the ball over as much as he has been. He's got to make more plays under pressure. And I just don't know if he'll be capable of that, which is why they're only number six. But I think their defense makes me a believer that they're a firm top seven team in the NFL right now. And they do have a good offense and a good defense. I'm just not sure that either unit right now is great. So that's why I have them at number six. At number five, the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs come in at number five for me. And the reason they're at number five, I think some people would think this is an overreaction because they did lose to a good Eagles team. Like, don't get me wrong. But you're number five because your offense is not good. Like, realistically, they're not a good offense. They, They haven't scored in the fourth quarter in how long? I mean, this offense is just not good enough. Their run game is too inconsistent. Their offensive line is really, really good and provides a lot of time for Mahomes, but their receivers don't make enough plays. They rather drop the ball or don't get open. And Mahomes has just not been as good as last year, point blank, period. Like, he's not playing as good as he did in his MVP campaign. Travis Kelsey seems a little slower, less explosive. Taylor Swift distraction. and The defense is awesome. That's why they're number five. The defense is awesome. Spags is awesome. The special teams is really good. But the offense is not good enough, right? They'll be in a lot of games. I just worry against the best teams in the league. They don't have the firepower. They don't have the offense to beat these teams. So that's why they're at number five. At number four, the Dallas Cowboys. What I don't have to worry about the Cowboys is firepower. They can score. They can score on offense and they can score on defense and they can score on special teams. We've seen that all year, right? The defense can take one back for six with Deron Bland, right? CeeDee Lamb can break one. Now Tony Pollard's playing better. J. 
Jalen Ferguson, Brandon Cooks, Michael Gallup, Jalen Tolbert, Turpin on special teams. Like, these guys are explosive. They can run the ball. They can throw the ball. The offensive line is good. Dak is playing as good as any quarterback in the league. The defense is a top three to five unit in this league. And they're super fast and explosive. And once they get a lead, they're dangerous. So, at number four, the Dallas Cowboys, they're a really good team. I don't know if they match up that well with the 49ers. But otherwise, I think they could definitely upset a team like the Eagles. I think they're a team that, you know, if I was a team like the Chiefs, I wouldn't want to see this team. So, at number four, I got the Cowboys. At number three, the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens, I think the difference for me between them and the Cowboys I just feel like Lamar is just such a different breed. Like, I understand they lost Mark Andrews, which is why I dock them a couple rankings here, a ranking or two. But Lamar, man, he's just so good. And it doesn't really show up in the stats. Like, his accuracy, his movement, his ability in and outside of the pocket, his ability to get any play necessary to win. And he has that, like, spark to him in big games. It's it's noticeable. He has this edge. And I think the rest of the team feeds off that. Especially if this team gets home field advantage, they're going to be really hard to beat in the AFC. The defense is really good, as good as any AFC defense other than the Browns. I think they're right there with the Chiefs. And they're good against the run. They're good against the pass. They're creative on offense and defense if Odell can continue to trend the way he's playing I feel like they'll be able to make up for the loss of Mark Andrews with Zay Flowers Nelson Aguilar Odell Beckham Isaiah Likely Devin Duvernay all these guys they've they have but the run the pass all that stuff I feel like they're balanced on both sides they've got good special teams good defense good good coaching good offense they don't really have any holes feels like they could be a little bit better on offense at times in the, you know, just like a little bit better on offense, a little bit better on defense at times. But like overall, like that's nitpicking. I, I don't really know what else to say. It's just losing Mark Andrews, you lose that go-to target. And, and that definitely hurts their chances. But they're still a top three team in my eyes. At number two, the Philadelphia Eagles. I have the Eagles at number two. I think they are arguably the best team in football, but something is just always missing for me with this team, and I can't quite categorize it. It feels like they're lacking creativity on offense or defense with each and every passing week. Like, honestly, I didn't really see anything original from the offense this week. I I thought they got outplayed for a majority of that game against the Chiefs defense. They kind of got overwhelmed by the Chiefs' pass rush, by their blitzing scheme. The corners, they kind of allowed the Chiefs to take A.J. Brown out of the game. They didn't have Dallas Goddard. Jalen Hurts was okay until the end, where I thought he was great. But the offense does worry me against well-coached defenses, especially a defense with a pass rush. And that's something that they'll have to face in the NFC. And then on the other side of the ball, like, I think the Chiefs' offense made them look a lot better than they are. Maybe I'm wrong, and maybe the Eagles are trending in the right direction on that side of the ball. I just really am down on the Chiefs' offense. Like, I don't think they're any good. I think the Eagles' defense looked better than they are because of that. So, I have them at number two. I think you could argue they're number one, but there's just subtle flaws with this team. And most of it has to do with scheme, I would say. Like, they're, they're fine on offense and defense schematically, play calling. They're not great. And I think that might be the difference between them at number two and my number one team, which is the San Francisco 49ers. I just don't think there's a coach that's close to Kyle Shanahan. I really don't. I mean, I, maybe I'm unrealistic. I just, I feel like he's so good. I, I feel like he's so much better than any other coach in the league right now. I, I don't think it's relatively close. Um, what he does with offense. I mean, Brock Purdy's had a perfect passer rating since the bye week. Brock Purdy's playing great football. And 
he is a playmaker. He is throwing the ball really well. He's making plays in and outside the pocket. He's putting the ball in perfect spots. Kyle's setting them up for success, and the offensive line's playing well. They're running the ball well. They throw the ball well. It feels like every time they need a play, they get it. Brandon Ayuk is one of the best receivers in the NFL right now. I'd argue he's a top 10 receiver in the league. Debo is really good. Kittle is arguably the best tight end in the league right now. Christian McCaffrey is arguably the best running back in the league right now. And it's all because of Kyle Shanahan. The positions he puts this guys in, it's just different. I think they're a lot to prepare for when they have all their tools at their disposal, including Trent Williams and Debo Samuel. It's just they can do so much on offense. It's They're the best offense in the league. And then you combine that with the, the league's best point-scoring defense with Chase Young added to the mix and the way J Javon Hargrave's playing as of late. I think the secondary can be tested at times. But I like the aggressiveness they're playing with. I think in the playoffs, they play a feisty style that is going to help them slow down opponents. And their run defense has really improved, which I'm really excited about for them. So they lost Hufanga, which is a loss. But I didn't really feel like he was an all-pro this year or anything like last year. I feel like they will replace him admirably. I don't know if they'll quite get the same level of safety play, but I think they'll be fine. Um... This is just a complete team. They have, in my opinion, the best offense. In my opinion, the best coach. In my opinion, a good enough special teams unit. And a defense that I think is top two or three in the league. So, they're just the most complete team. I, I might be off. You know, you could argue the Eagles. They're going to play in a couple weeks. It just feels like I can rely on that Niners offense. Passing, running, doing whatever on offense. It feels like the Eagles have been exposed at times through their play calling in their scheme in ways that the Niners haven't. The Niners just more beat themselves. The defense, I think, is better than the Eagles by quite a wide margin. So that's kind of my explanation why I have the Niners above the Eagles. Feel like the defense is better. Feel like the coach is better. Feel like the offense is a bit better. But it's close on offense. But I feel like number one is San Francisco. When they're at their best, they're the best team in the NFL. Those are my power rankings for week 12 of the 2023 NFL season. If you enjoyed, Gronk spike the like button and subscribe. Had a lot of thoughts this week, a little bit longer of a video. Let me know if you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.